Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to update you on the uh, evolution of near metals uh, as we sort of trans, uh, as so we sort of evolve from a hard rock miner uh, into an urban miner, supplying minerals and materials for these millennial megatrends. Uh, listed on the Australian Stock Exchange, so the normal speed reading test. It basically just says if you're going to buy shares, you should ring a broker. So for those that don't know Near Metals, we're listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Uh, we are a project developer. Uh, our strategic focus uh, is on energy storage and the electric vehicle thematic. We got into lithium 10 years ago. Uh, we built the world's second largest hard rock lithium mine with a couple of partners. We exited that uh, this year. Uh, I'll tell you today about our three main uh, advanced development projects that still have exposures to that. Um, we've currently got cash of Australian $100 million. Our market cap's about $100 million. Uh, no debt. Um, we've returned $45 million back to our shareholders in the last four years. So I, I think if you could take anything away, one, I want you to feel secure about being a near metal shareholder, and two, uh, have an appreciation for the uh, huge growth options that we do have in our portfolio. And this thing needs new batteries. So what we do, uh, it's a little different from um, normal mining companies. What we do is go out, we identify first what sectors we want to be in for the long term. My family's been in mining for uh, four generations, so invariably you can't pick all the cycles perfectly and you've got to be comfortable with that asset. And that you can identify, secure it, build the value with the drill bit in the test lab or with your evaluation studies. And then we realise it by bringing in multi-billion dollar companies to develop our projects. Uh, to support, you know, it's almost like picking tennis partners. They're strong where we're weak. And so what that's been able to uh, enable us to do is to develop these projects at their optimal scale, lower the risk, accelerate the returns, uh, and then we return the value back to the shareholders. The board and management are the largest shareholders in the company. That's enabled us to, have, uh, to build a first-class balance sheet and a first-class commercial and technical team. So our three core projects uh, that will, well, okay, uh, is the lithium battery recycling project, uh, the Barambi titanium vanadium project, and the lithium refinery project. So I guess the opportunity is multiple exposures into this EV megatrend. What we can see is the battery plants that are being built uh, both in Europe and outside Europe, in China and Asia, and we soon worked out that we wanted to be in lithium because what this was going to do to demand. Uh, and we've also got exposure into nickel and cobalt through this lithium battery recycling. And here's the opportunity for lithium battery recycling. So like, hands up anyone here who's ever put a lithium phone in for recycling. Now we've had lithium phones around for a long time. If you hold up your iPhones, they're 20% by weight cobalt. Right? There's six or 7,000 bucks worth of cobalt in every tonne of those batteries. In the EV batteries, depending on the formula, there's between two and a half and four thousand dollars US per tonne. And so we can see the number of batteries getting, hitting the market growing asymptotically. Uh, and then you've got a lag effect for uh, the batteries and their, at their end of life. But you probably don't appreciate that in their production process, about 10% gets kicked out as scrapped. So what we set aside to do, given that we're good miners, is actually develop a process where we can recover these critical battery materials. So we've developed a process in two stages, one where we can take the batteries, safely shred them, deactivate them, make them safe to store. And then what we do is we put them in a, uh, in a hydromet plant, we dissolve them and we SX, IX out the individual base metal sulphates, uh, recovering very, very, uh, we've got excellent recoveries in the order of 90% and we're producing very high quality battery sulphates that can go straight back into the cathode chain. Um, here's a conceptual layout of our approach for the EU, where we would have a number of shredding facilities located adjacent to cell making facilities and car makers who have a primary obligation to recycle not less than 85% of the products that they produce. Um, and there are penalties not to. And there's lots of reasons, nice warm fuzzy ones, we have you know, massive le massively less CO2 footprint than making these sulphates out of virgin deposits. 
Um, you know, we have ethical sourcing for the cobalt that we recover. Um, you know, it's a circular economy, ESG, all the nice green words. So that's what our conceptual market is and Europe is our main focus. And so what we've done is we've brought in a multi-billion dollar company, SMS Group, largest builder of process plants in the world, 140 years old, 14,500 employees in 95 sites. What they will do is they will co-fund the final stages of evaluation with us. We're going to have a uh, demonstration plant in Germany. We'll relocate our current shredding facility that we have from the US uh, into Germany. We'll then build a hydromet demonstration plant in Vienna. Uh, and we'll run our engineering studies and our commercial activities to culminate uh, in a final investment decision on or around the end of this year. SMS will actually build the plants, they will operate the plants, and on a best endeavours basis, they've got to produce 50% of the debt financing. They are the largest generator of KFW financings uh, under the German ECA scheme. In terms of the economics, fantastic economics just for the starter plant. So the starter plant is designed to be put next to one of these facilities to take the off-spec material, the failed cells, the failed packs, some statistical returns. And so we've got about just a bit under 20,000 tonnes per annum feed rate. Uh, that's going to cost us somewhere around 100 million Australian dollars. We've got SMS there on 50-50 basis. We get 50-50 debt equity finance. We can self-fund this off our own balance sheet. We'll put in $25 million. Fantastic IRR, 72%. As, and then we'll also study making the 200,000 tonne plant and we'll get significant econo economies of scale. We've got the same amount of people to run a 20,000 tonne plant as we do a 200. And so, you know, one of the other uh, commodities that we like, it's not yet, you know, really driven uh, by the battery market, but we entered lithium 10 years ago when, you know, lithium, the batteries were a small part of the lithium demand. And we've seen the prices there go from a historical average of about 5,000 a tonne to well over 20,000 a tonne. And for the battery grade materials now, we're down back at 10,000 a tonne. So what we did last year is we thought, well, nickel's going to come off. Nickel, for us, is a three to five year proposition. So what we did is we went out and bought uh, a dominant land position in the second largest nickel production belt in Western Australia. So we've got 240 square kilometres of the Widgee Malta Dome. It's only second to the Campbellda Dome in terms of production, produced about $35 billion worth of nickel. Uh, we've got 131,000 tonnes, or sorry, 130,000 tonnes of contained nickel in 11 nickel sulphide deposits, only 40 kilometres from Cambelda, where BHP has a 2 million tonne nickel concentrator that is currently on care and maintenance. Granted, mining leases on the road, on the rail, on high voltage power, water and gas. And so what we're doing is we're going through these uh, deposits uh, that are look large and low grade at 1% and identifying the matrix and massive sulphides that are contained within that. We put some results, I've got today there, but that was if you were listening to me last Friday. So drilling beneath uh, an old open pit within a current jork resource, we're able to intersect 34 metres of almost 2%, but within the big large, sitting underneath the large disseminated ore body uh, was very, very high grade, six metres at 8%. So we're going through and not only refining and bringing up the grade and the confidence of these deposits, we are also making new discoveries. Um, we've discovered uh, nickel sulphide mineralisation in our maiden drilling on some tenements that we acquired that adjoin Cassini, uh, which is Mincor's the highest grade discovery uh, of recent times in Australia. So as I said, you know, I wanted you to feel secure. Yeah, we've got a market cap. Uh, backed by cash. We've got a fantastic board and management team, collectively the largest shareholders. There's obviously uh, a market cap discrepancy and we have multiple catalysts across a diversified portfolio and uh, I'd encourage you to come and see us at, uh, I think we're L6. So thank you very much for your attention.